Gemini Born in the spring moon sky Couldn't change her if you tried She's got roses on her mind mm, Watch them grow Hello people, welcome to Ivory Coast or Côte d'Ivoire as they prefer to be called. This beautiful, gorgeous West African country has been on my bucket list for the longest time and I have been looking forward to having that checked off my bucket list. And when the elf call came, I knew it was a sign for me to finally visit and have that checked off. Okay. My dragon is here to take the cup back home. From the moment I touched down, my first thing I said was, Color me impressed. So, this tournament leading to the finals, all I kept saying was, If Nigeria was able to get to the finals, I'm going to be there live and direct to share my country. Ah! And exploit the beautiful country called Côte d'Ivoire. Now, as a football fanatic and a true Nigerian, I was hoping we would win, but I know it was a game and there could be several outcomes. So I came, I wore the badge, I raised the flag proudly, I shared loudly, but sadly we did not win. But at least we made it to the finals, and I'm getting ready for the next year tournament already. The cup was presented and we celebrated with the Ivorians, with us on the streets at night. That was honestly one of the best experiences of my life and I cannot wait to experience it again. Now I've come down and dusted, it was time to explore this beautiful country and all it has to offer. From crashing a wedding, literally crashing two weddings. To getting to meet the people, experiencing the people and the countryside and exploring some of the most amazing tourist attraction centers in the whole of Africa. Getting to experience that culture, the language, and most importantly, you know already the food. The food was amazing. It was honestly some of the best days I've had in a really long time. And as always, I get to take you along on my amazing adventure. So we're going to call this Vanessa Takes Ivory Coast. Are you ready? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And come, let's go explore this country. <laughs> so we just got in and my adventure body for this trip is Stephanie. Stephanie is on YouTube but she's on IG basically but she's going to be our first for the trip. Money trips are definitely not my thing but I wanted to get him on Saturday morning so I have an ample time to spend for the next day tournament. And I have spent the previous day getting ready for this trip, so I was really interested. But we're here. Hello. Yeah, welcome to Abu. 
So we're going to book our ticket walk here first and then we'll go to the hotel fresh you know and we're gonna look for match tickets. <laughs> so tomorrow we know our sex and then we'll do a lot of other stuff with that anyway. First impression from the moment I touched that, my mind was completely blown. Not only by the beautiful developed country that I was seeing for the very first time, but by the people, hospitality, development, and quite frankly, everything. It was honestly one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And I kept saying, is this West Africa? Is this West Africa? Can you imagine? Anyway, the stadiums that hosted the tournament were a world-class standard. You would not even believe they were in Africa. Even the neighboring cities to Abidjan were developed, like really, really developed. The road network was amazing and Abidjan as a city was one of the most busiest next to lagos yet most organized places i've ever visited it is honestly one of the most underrated countries ever because up until this my visit i never knew this country was you know the way it was what i was seeing the whole construction going on metropolitan they have this whole now i do realize leading to this tournament a lot of money was spent on infrastructure building the stadiums and roads but some of these roads were already done and there were some that were under construction there was this metro line going on that was going to be running through the whole city what you're seeing here is the metro construction they're constructing there like a metro line that will run throughout the whole city it's amazing what they're doing okay. here basically yeah metro, metro lane okay wow, that constructing metro lane i can understand friends wow, wow. <laughs> that's that how the metro lane yeah and I also get to realize that Abidjan is the city with the third biggest first speaking population anywhere in the world. The latest French girl in town. <laughs> 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 To you, it's easy to understand. Those were some of my first impressions, but I cannot wait to explore more of this city. And as we go, we get to discover more. And I am honestly amazed so far. So, first impression. Loving it already. I'm loving it already. Vanessa takes Abidjan. Ivory Coast, also known as Côte d'Ivoire, officially the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, is a country in the southern coast of West Africa. The country is made up of four natural regions, and Abidjan has been the capital of this country since 1983. It is bounded by Mali and Burkina Faso, to the east by Ghana, and to the south by the Gulf of Guinea, and to the southwest by Liberia, and to the northwest Guinea. The country has over 60 ethnic groups. Traditionally, the groups were independent from each other, but over time, internal migration and extensive intermarriages greatly reduced group identity with a particular cultural tradition in any given locality. Each of these groups has ethnic affiliation with a larger group living outside the borders of the country. The Bell, I think that's how it's pronounced, as well as other people living in the east of the Bandana, Badama River, are affiliated with the Akan in Ghana. And now back to Abidjan. Abidjan has officially been designated the economic capital of the country because it is the largest city in the country and the center of its economic activities. Many political institutions and foreign embassies are all located in Abidjan. And like I said earlier, Abidjan is a city with the third 
biggest French speaking population anywhere in the world. It is also the fourth most popular city in Africa with about 4.7 million people living there alone. This is where the St. Paul Cathedral in Abidjan is built and it costs about 12 million dollars. I cannot wait to visit and as always I'm going to take you guys along. So while we drive through the city on the first impression tour, let me tell you 12 things you should know about Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is the home to the largest church in the world, known as the Basilica of Our Lady of Peace of Yamosoko, surpasses even the St. Peter's Basilica with an exterior area of 30,000 square meters finished in 1990. It, it can hold about 18,000 worshippers. So it is really filled. It is also one of the most famous churches and one of the most famous attraction centers in Ivory Coast. One of the most famous African footballer of all time is from Ivory Coast, known as Didier Drogba. You know, this already a Chelsea fan. The national team has a peculiar name with our court lace elephant. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ivory Coast has one of the most fastest growing and booming tourism centers in Africa. Only does it have some of the best beaches. It has an annual visitors list rising to about 250 visitors. This country so far two civil wars between 2002 and 2011. But visiting today, you would not know this is a country recovering from civil war. You'll be amazed what a stable functioning government can achieve when they put their mind to it, basically. It is the world's largest cocoa producer and they, they have like again some lush mountains and they have a lot of animal reserve where you can see a lot of like elephant. They have a lot of parks like that where you can go and sight elephant. It has two capitals. There's Yomosoko is the national political capital while Abidjan is its economic capital and the largest city in the country. And I also got to find out that not only is Abidjan referred to as the Paris of West Africa or of Africa, it is also referred to as the Manhattan of West Africa. So it's called the Paris of Africa because of its skyline within and the whole lagoon sand in it. And the business district is also known as the Manhattan of West Africa because it was considered one of the most foremost African cities in terms of fashion, culture, and so much more. Now, as you already know, Abidjan is the business district of the country and one of the capitals of the country also. Not only is it known for its beautiful beaches and diverse cuisine, but cost of living here, some might say it's relatively low, but from my personal experience, compared to where I was coming from, I can honestly say it's one of the most expensive cities to live in, but the cost of living here it varies or it depends basically. Now when it comes to food, transportation and all of those things is actually very low and affordable but cost of living that's accommodation and the rest is on the high hotels were a bit expensive and that was basically mostly because of the tournament that was going on so on another time if i come i'll be able to explore more and see the price differences just so i can tell you more about it but relatively food is very cheap here transportation is affordable for public transportation taxes are actually very expensive but cost of renting is what is actually expensive and it depends on the area you're living in like every city there are the area where the things are very expensive or renting is very expensive and experts coming in they mostly go to those areas so they would find it a bit expensive but it is totally worth it like i would say so Overall, if you if you are adding cost of renting, food, transportation, day-to-day -day living, I would say it's relatively low. It's not too expensive. As for safety, it was relatively safe, or it was safe. I didn't really experience anything here that was out of the ordinary. The only thing, the only safety concern people keep pointing me about was my phone, just because I seen with my phone. So my phone was always out, and they kept telling me, oh. They can take your phone but that happened anywhere basically like every other country there are some safety concern and one of the reason why phone theft is on the rise basically or why they kept warning me about holding my phone or be careful about my phone because the large because of the civil war largely their population are mainly youth 
I think the civil war really affected them. So a vast majority of the population are youth, teenagers, and kids basically just going and you know how it is. So relatively it's safe. Where if you're in your house, you're safe, there is nothing bad happening. It's just a phone tape they keep asking me. And now we've arrived at my hotel. I will see you guys in a bit. Now, because of the tournament, getting accommodation here was very hard. But we were lucky enough to find this little cute boutique hotel. And we arrived and there was like two weddings going on that we crashed. It was the cutest thing ever. They were having wedding here. I'm going to show you the whole brand later. Obviously, I can't do that now because of what is going on that you can see downstairs. But then we've been going around Abidjan basically trying to get a cash. We were able, finally able to secure an ATM that was paying in cash and now we're back at the hotel, we checked in successfully, we're going to freshen up and then we're going to head back down to town to try and get ticket also. The hotel I'm staying at is at Yopongo Abidjan, Yopongo Abidjan, it's um, about 45 minutes from the stadium where the whole uh, final will be played. The stadium is basically just outside of Abidjan Yomo. So I, I can't pronounce the name but it's outside of Abidjan. It's a city close to Abidjan. They will stay in Abidjan so in 45 minutes we'll be there. So this is our cute hotel and I'm going to be showing you. Don't worry I'll give you like a complete tour. We'll be here for a couple of days so we'll have enough time. This vlog is packed. I literally decided to give you everything the whole days we spent here together in one vlog instead of spreading them out. So you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat, my people. Anyway, let's go check in. Fresh enough just so we can head back down to town. And yeah, a cute couple. They were so young. The wedding colors were amazing. I was just wow, wow. I sell dreams. I should be able to turn color best. Are you see? This is how you turn color. And we are back on the street, Charlie. Oh, we're back on the street and we've been trying to secure our match ticket. I came in today, a day earlier, basically just so I can get match ticket because I was unable to get online. But so far, all of the places we've been to, they've not been selling tickets. Or oh, they're not selling tickets to Nigeria. So you need to see all of that tomorrow. So we're heading to the Nigerian embassy here now to see if we can get tickets there. And thankfully, the Nigerian embassy is just opposite where the third place match between Egypt and Congo is going on. So that's exciting. We're going to go there, but then we're back on the street of Abidjan. Abidjan is literally love at first sight. The city is so pleasant. It's so civilized, you know. It's one of the most civilized places I've ever been here. Like, um, by any sub Saharan African cities, basically, traffic is an issue here. But yeah, but it's not, it's nothing compared to Lagos. I'm Nigerian, so I'm used to traffic. But as of the city like this, there is no much traffic going on. So, we're going to the Nigerian embassy now, where a lot of embassies are. One thing I've noticed is there's a lot of French influence still here. Like, they've gained independence for 60 something years, but you could still like, see a lot of French, you know, influence in the country, not just the language. There are lots of buildings that were considered by the French and we were here and this is the stadium where the match is going on. We are basically sitting in front of the Nigerian embassy waiting for someone to come because it was on a weekend, Saturday basically so not a lot was going on there so we are just sitting waiting for ticket because so far every other place in Abidjan they are only selling to Ivorians, they are not selling to, to Nigerians basically. So we're playing against each other just so they can fill the stadium with Ivorians and both Nigerians. But anyway, hopefully we'll be able to get tickets for the match tomorrow. So 
so the third place game was about to get started and i could hear the noise from inside the stadium i'm like is this what i'm going to experience so well, i need to get this ticket by all means so i was really committed to sitting here until i can get a ticket and then we got to like speak with some uh, bbc reporter basically i was covering the whole event it came what are you guys doing and the rest and the bbc um guy was from kenya i'm like oh i have a kenyan friend so shout out to andrea everybody we've met here so far they've been really pleasant to us No, 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 you guys, you, you, you can show us like you really have <laughs> For story time. Before we start with story time, I have three nice, uh, tickets. For tomorrow's game, we, oh, we have three tickets. Hmm. Smell. You get what's now I don't see Shiggy for this Abidjan. I, I'm not. You, I, I used to call it Abidjan, but now I, I know it's Abidjan, so I'm not like Abidjan. I'm acting all posh and proper in it. Oh, I thought they play live with that one too. Six tickets today. So far, so far was for more than seven hours. We left around 3, we came back 9.30, so the hotel, uh, we don't even see food chop again <laughs> because the kitchen don't close for night, so we can't even get food, we don't eat in all day because of ticket. See, uh, wickedness, people are holding ticket. So I came today like, oh, forget it before uh, around 12, we able to get physical ticket, right? If you think you are coming tomorrow and you'll be able to get a ticket, or do it for you because now, now only level 3 tickets with DC and level 3 ticket far. Now, what we end up? And now, level 3 ticket is selling for 6,000 sephars. 60,000 sephars. 60,000 sephars is um, more than 150,000 naira. And the ticket, the official price of the tickets is literally 5,000 sephars. So, if I are buying tickets of 5,000 sephars, I be selling them for sixty thousand sephars for one ticket of level three. First, don't reach the every coast. What do you go do? I'm like, if I call this place, I don't worry this much. And the body go surplus. <laughs> they will see we did Nigeria embassy from three p.m. to nine thirty p.m. It got to the point they they even had to come and drop us at our hotel because ah, shake and we see. To the embassy who said, Man, not talk for they will see me tomorrow. Say, Now you go tell them with a set ticket. <laughs> see, Nigeria things and now uh, uh, the I've evolved as well. My face is a mess because I just woke up. I'm like, Let me do a quick tour of the place for you guys. It's so cute. So, the name of this hotel is Devente Hotel, it's in Yopogo Abidjan. It's this very cute little boutique hotel and for the very first time i understand why a lot of influencers that i follow travel influencers they prefer when they visit different countries they prefer staying in a boutique hotel than like a mega large day hotel this hotel was so cute it has like this old paris vibe to it if you are like me and you read a lot of books growing up because i read a lot of books when you read about them um, stories all those old ranch story with little i don't want to get into those details so much but it also has a little bit of uh, emily in paris vibe it's like old paris vibe uh, uh, couple with indian decor so a lot of the decors were like indian inspired anyway you're going to see all of that very soon 
let me walk you through the ground and then we go upstairs i'm just showing you the whole place quickly and then we go get our day started because the day is young this is very early in the morning i literally just woke up i'm like now that everyone is still sleeping and if it's is deserted i can walk the ground for you just so you can you know have a feel of where i'm staying at if you're coming to abidjan you can decide if you want to be here or not but it was really cute i'm going to show you indoors very soon but we're going to do a tour of this place a shower have breakfast and head to town and visit some tourist attraction places before the game starts i'm really excited for this day are you excited So walking from the reception you just walk straight into this cute garden that has this whole fountain thing going on and then they have like a place where you can sit like an outdoor dining where you, you basically are sitting down in a day in the garden and then they have a bar by the side also and then they have like art deco you can there's this place is i really love the vibe it has this old cultural like real abidjan you know that's why it's called Paris of Africa I mean, so it has a lot of you know you I really just love how simple everything was and how a lot of the original design were on tour so this is the back area yeah that's one of the people here also there are a lot of persons here but this is where you sit and have breakfast this is what we're going to be having breakfast and then this is the the bar area where they have like the old art piece so it's really like um, antique here yeah, that's what i'm looking for like this whole antique feeling to it and i really love that about it but yeah this is the garden we'll be going up in the mini there are rooms downstairs if you wanted to i opted for a room upstairs just so i can have like the perfect view of the garden even if i'm not here it was really cute And now let's go upstairs just so I can show you what's upstairs also. I've covered the ground for you, the garden, as one of the best things. It attracted me to when I was booking this Now this is the upstairs indoor dining area. This is where you see a lot of Indian things. I think this place is originally owned by Indian. So all it was built by the fr French and then it was either owned by Indian. So it's just like everything is going on. You have little elephant decor on this. How do they call them? Is it Buddha stuff going on here? But in here you can really see like um, the Indian touch to the place. But this is the indoor dining area. 
and then going outside you can look down you see that you can look down how like the most gorgeous view of the garden from up here it was really amazing but it's not big and basically i've given you the tour i'm going to be giving you the tour of our room later but right now our room is with this scatter and my travel body is still sleeping stephanie so i'll give you the tour of the room it does the interior later but this is the exterior of the place cute now let's shower fresh you know go have breakfast and head to town Hello, good morning, good mo bonjour, I'm in Paris, we oui, oui. Oh my goodness, I'm playing a lot. Hi, good morning, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, it's day two in Ivory Coast. Today is the March game day, but this is money. Oh, you know how I do basically, I'm going to take you around. But then before that, let's head downstairs, have breakfast, then we can go to town quickly, toy a bit, and then we'll come back here ready for Afcon. You know, <laughs> I'm really excited. Can you tell I said that I am? Like, I've been so like, yesterday I was so busy trying to get tickets, ignore the mess around me, girls getting ready. Well, basically, get it, uh, busy running around trying to get together. I, I didn't really take time to appreciate the city, so I'm going to do that today. And of course, you're going to call me, but let's go have breakfast so we can head to town and try out a lot of you know. I don't know what we're going to do, but hopefully, it's going to be fun. So, yeah, come, let's go downstairs and have breakfast. See you in a bit. So since yesterday that we arrived, because of the whole running around trying to secure tickets and all of that, I've not really been able to... I just been uh, trying to secure tickets, creating content, I'm just going everywhere. But I've not been able to like eat any food. So I think yesterday I ate one of the pastries also because they have pastries waiting for us in our room just because they knew their kitchen was closing. They're very nice basically. But one thing I can tell you is they have the best pastries ever. If you're ever in Abidjan, they're known for their pastries. You should definitely give it a try. Like anything pastry here tastes amazing. I'm like, uh-uh, kini. So when I go to France, this is what I'm going to be enjoying. Anyway, it's really nice. Oh, oh, oh. 
and now we're back on the street but firstly we're going to try and get cash from atm because we are took out money yesterday that was supposed to like last us try the trip but we ended up spending the whole money on tickets alone because ticket that was supposed to cost about five thousand sephars ended up costing sixty thousand sephar each so thousand sephar at the time i was recording this was about a thousand five hundred thousand six hundred ghana cities and thousand one hundred fifty thousand naira basically and then the three ticket we cost rounded up to 180k sephars which was literally more than six thousand ghana cities and um, more than six hundred thousand naira or, or more close to five hundred thousand naira basically as i when i was recording this so we're out of money we need that money to like go to town and now we are at one of the biggest country that ever i've been wanting to come here this is our first stop for today we're able to get us cash and now we can explore So we're at, I think it's called the Saint Paul Catrida. Yeah, it was the Saint Paul Catrida. Basically, it's one of the biggest Catridas here. I, like I said earlier on, they had like the biggest Catridas. This was constructed a long time ago. We're going to go around it. But one thing that I want to stop and tell you is that the people here are so nice. Like, I've been telling you about a lot of oh, things. Yeah. Telling you about, you know, yeah, I'll see you man. Know, Today, I'll oh, see man. Advice. Oh, hey. here, I have been okay. a negative connotation when it comes to Francophone countries. Because Francophone countries of Africa and Anglophone countries, we have a little bit of stress. They usually, I don't know, I don't know if it's the language barrier. The other two Francophone countries I've been to, I'm not going to mention them. They were not as nice as these people, but these people. They are so nice and they go out of their way to try to make it understand what they are saying so it was like um, there was a language barrier going on but you are excited to learn right why do that people you go and they literally shame you for not understanding french like you're supposed to understand from like i'm from an english-speaking country you were colonized by the french i was colonized by the british so i speak their language you speak your own language I know we're supposed to learn these languages, but sadly I cannot speak the language. Those ones will make you feel like you not being able to speak French was like a, a disadvantage or whatever. But these ones here, they're like, can you speak French? No, and then they'll go out of their way trying to explain, and then we'll have a lot of Google translation going on. They will, from the very festival that picked us up to anyway till when i left abidjan everyone was super nice to me or super nice to us even the hotel staff we're going to see all of that in a mini bed they were really nice we always do this whole football banter we we'll speak we we'll like sign language we, we communication was hard but it wasn't hard can you i don't know how to explain it but it was not what i expected basically they really blew me these people they are really nice yeah they have a lot of uh, similarities with Ghanaians. i was like oh okay your neighbors i understand that they're nice people for real i cannot wait to go back to abidjan and spend like a couple of weeks just like i explore a lot of places not abidjan ivory coast but yeah ivory coast was really nice so we spent a lot of time there trying to take photos, getting ATM and the rest of those things and then we discovered it was running late. I'm like, you know what, let's quickly head back to the hotel, dress and start going to the stadium for our match because we were about an hour away from where the finals was 
going on, like I said, we we're living in Abidjan, we we're putting up in Abidjan. The finance took place just as get of Abidjan, outside of Abidjan. You more, I cannot pronounce the name, but you know where it is already. So, going back to the hotel, and now we're, we're ready, ready to go. Yeah, go Eagles! Go Eagles! So I went hunting for tickets yesterday. They gave us that other white t-shirt that I wearing or I was wearing for the calf. So I wait to wear that at the stadium and then I'll change to the Nigeria jersey at the stadium just so I can, you know, wear boots when I'm going. This was the official calf anyway t-shirt that we're giving yesterday. So yeah, stadium. On our way to the stadium, we are super eagles. Go eagles, go eagles, go eagles. So where the AFCON final is taking place is the Alassane Katara Stadium, also known as the Olympic Stadium of Ebingpe. It's a 60,000 seat capacity stadium and it's just on the outskirts of Abidjan. We're living in, we're putting up in Yopongo, Abidjan. And from Yopongo to that place was about 45 minutes without traffic. But with traffic on this day, we ended up spending more than that because getting closer to the stadium, we encountered traffic along the way. But this is a skate of Abidjan and I was really impressed by the state of the roads. Basically, you, as you can tell, these roads were not like newly constructed roads. So it does not like, oh, they constructed them for the tournament. No, it wasn't. They were like already functioning road already. So it was really amazing to see how developed uh, the country was outside of Abidjan. And another thing I'm going to comment on was this country there's a reason it is known as football country. Like everyone was so involved in the AFCON finals. Or most of the houses they have the uh, flags flying, the colors painted everywhere. You could feel it that these people they are really hosting the tournament and they are in the finals from uh, uh, Yupongo Abidjan down to the stadium. It was lit out with people with. Um, jerseys the colors everywhere it was really amazing to see how they come together for football like i said the vast majority of their population are very young so i can see why they are really into football like this but this is not like it's nothing like you've ever seen it's not i've never seen anything like this like a whole country being so involved in football usually this area we were well, some people are involved some are not but here women men children boys guests everyone is involved they love football so much and i really love that about them So private taxis were not allowed past a certain point just to keep everything organized and then they have like shuttle taking people to the stadium where both Ivorians and Nigerians you just have to show your ticket and you just enter and we're going to the stadium now did I say they have fine boys anyway let me keep quiet that's not why we're here <laughs> I'm just saying but yeah we're here everywhere is in touch <laughs> See, one thing I've got to notice here is Osime has a large fan base here. Like from the very uh, from yesterday till now, everybody kept saying Osime, we love Osime, but we need people. One thing about them was how they were like uh, very receptive towards. I was thinking because we're Nigerians and they're Ivorians, there's going to be animosity because we're playing the final. But no. Literally, everyone was so excited to see us Nigeria. They will hail us. You hear your distinct will us. Oh, I love us, see me. I love Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria yeah, ready? I'm like, seriously? Ready? Is ready? this whole enmity that we think of now in Nigeria? It was not. There was the the whole place was not tense. My mom was worried that, oh, are you sure you're going to be safe or anything? I'm like, yeah. Then I go to and notice that everyone was like, oh, let's do this. It was really amazing. I really love how they treated us. They really had zero animosity towards us. First time the day we realized our whole stuff is different and our insights were running inside. 
So the cue to basically change your line ticket or physical ticket was wrong. Uh, gladly we got physical ticket yesterday. So we skip all of that and we're heading inside now. So we will pass the queue for tickets now. These are people that, you know, we're verified and we have our tag going and we're heading inside. The stadium was so beautiful. I had already seen photos and videos of it from all the uh, matches that we played here. Coming here, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Is this Africa? I really hope or wish I had come with a drone just like I get like an overview for you. It was so gorgeous. But the walkway was so long, like they made it so long just to, you know, I think to control the crowd coming in because in a minute you're going to be see how shook this place is and there were a lot of persons still outside. Anyway, this whole walkway we were littered with uh, military men, policemen, anyway, security agencies trying to keep everyone in check. We were holding the uh, fans. They said, Oh, you can't take the fans inside, but they later let us take them inside. For the very first time, I did not feel like, you know, Nigerian, you're Nigerian, this, we don't like it because you're Nigerian. It was so different with this people, and I really love that about them. Like, they love Nigeria. I'm like, Everywhere you go, we love Nigeria. I'm like, I love you guys too. Why am I just noticing that you people like us? At least these are some persons that have zero animosity towards us. It was just the game. The game, the tickets, they didn't set tickets in Nigeria. So they wanted our people in the stadium. It was understandable because they were the one hosting it. So they wanted their people there. But apart from that, they loved us. She goes ready. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from like local tournament that we had in my community every December, every December my community will have like this football tournament where different quarters they bring players represent for them play for like a cup. This is my first ever live game I've ever attended. Like if stadium, this whole capacity, and it was an Afghan final, and I'm so giddy. I'm like, this is what I've been missing. Eh, I'm going to be watching live football now. My own live goal now is to be attending football matches. I always watch football. If you don't know, I'm a football fanatic. I'm a Man United fan. I do not miss football. I actually live and great football. So coming here, the environment, everything about it, I was so I was in high spirit. Then there was this feeling. I can't even put it into words how I was feeling. I was really excited. I'm like, wow. This is an experience of a lifetime and next tournament I am going to be there from beginning to the end of that tournament. I cannot wait. I don't I, Morocco is hosting. Hopefully I'm able to go, but I'm really planning towards it now and I'm really excited. Now it's time to change from the calf t-shirt to the Nigerian t-shirt. I'm going to do like a transition with it. It goes ready. <laughs> And now Omo Ninja is ready to go and represent her country. Hey, my father's lad. Let's go. I'm really excited. But from here on, it gets chaotic. I legit almost lost my life trying to get into the stadium. Like, ha. Huh. The crowd was too much. At the point, they started putting. I was helped by some Evorians and security force basically they head me up ah this stampede if they had stepped on me it would have been a different story but thankfully i was able to scale through and because of that i ended in fact i ended up entering the stadium late not too late because the game had not started but i wanted to go in when uh, the old opening ceremony was going on but then the opening ceremony was already done before i got in ah jesus christ but it was still fun though
finally we were able to get inside jesus christ i don't want to experience that that process of getting inside was something i don't want to experience again but inside i'm like okay it was totally what it was totally what it but we sat among ivorians because like i said the whole stadium was filled with ivorians not nigerians they refused to set to get to nigerians i think they needed the whole sandstorm so we're like a uh, few nigerians among the ivorians but anyway they were very nice to us they were very receptive towards us they didn't treat us anyhow and now and then it's going to be our national anthem so we present it was really amazing <laughs> The way these people they were treating us, it was so nice. They would bring water, they would give us, they would bring anything that they could, they would give us. We were just like we are Ivorians wearing a Nigerian jerseys with a Nigerian flag. They were really like I really loved that about them. That was what that was the way they were. We started celebrating with them, we started dancing with them. Because these people they were like so amazing. Okay, I'm done. From here on now, I'm just going to be like a football fanatic, a football fan game. I'm sorry if I'm screaming in your ears. But I'm going to show you like the backstage. I'm not going to show you the main game because it was out already. So the leading up to the game and all of those things are going to be seen from here on. So hopefully you enjoy.
It was amazing how the warriors were singing Nigerian song. Like they could sing every one of the Nigerian songs they were playing here. I'm like, ah ah, let the child communicate with us, we little little English. I'm like, I'm really influenced now going to learn French. Just when I go to any of these countries, I'm able to communicate with them better. So imagine communication was not living in Hazo and Mongo. You see how we're living here. I really love this country. It's about to be game time, we really game time. I was really excited. Oh my goodness, game time. It was the way they were proudly waving the flag for us and they joined us in our national anthem. This is amazing, I swear to you.
now their national anthem came on and we joined them also we were basically so blended here you would not understand i was just two nigerians in the midst of all these ivorians the way we were and we are not even faced because they included us We were all chanting DJ, DJ, DJ Drogba. I mean, he's an Ivorian, but he's an African legend. We all joined here with chanting DJ, DJ when he came on to game. It was amazing. Yeah, they've given us water. Like these people, they fed us, they gave us water. Everything they wanted, they were bringing it to them. Take also. We were like involved in everything, included in everything. Uh, we might, I might not even get to see some of them ever again, but they were really amazing to us. So, hi! The game ended with loss that we legit just started passing. Everybody started dancing and then I was uh I was uh we we're waiting for them to set up the stage just so they can present the call and we we're basically just all dancing.
in the cup presentation started, they were giving out a, a medal to the Nigerians, and then the Ivorians that were asked that were unable to get like tickets in, they broke down the barrier, and the whole stage just started getting filled up, stampedes are happening. So we're trying to like find our way. Uh, they really helped us. A lot of the Ivorians they protected us. You know they would have stepped on we little girls will go watch football. <laughs> Even I worry, everybody was trying to run to safety and uh, let's get out of this list um, before it gets really violent here because it was getting choked. But somehow we were able to get out of the stadium on Scout's edge. We got outside, you see people are still trooping in, people are coming to the stadium from every corner. We were like trying to go outside and then we noticed the outside was actually where the party people were just celebrating outside. We were just having fun. We see them, we dance together, congratulations. We love you Nigeria, we say we love you too. I was trying to film, anyway, at a point it got really rough because they started trying to, anyway, you're going to see that in a minute. I wanted to film the whole outdoor activities going on because there were a lot of things going on but then they started taking people's phone and then police came and they were trying to stop them from taking phones and they started fighting their police they, it's not like they were taking foreigners phone they were taking everybody's phone <laughs> whether you're Ivorian you like if your your phone is at record boys were just trying to snatch phones and then they were not trying to fight the police that was trying to stop them so tear gas was released we were run running at Tasketa after we left this place I actually lost Tetsne and let me tell you if you're traveling with someone that's traveling in group don't let one person be the one with the catch and we took out catch stephanie was the one holding it and we got just one sim card so we put the sim card in her phone because my phones were always used for filming so i basically just give everything to her just so she can handle everything right and then we lost contact so now i was left with my phones that were with me and then our walking sim card was in her phone our money was with her so i had no money i had no card to call i had no sim card to call her oh my goodness 
I was very lucky that we were working with some other Nigerians and then they were the ones that were able to take me safely to our hotel. And then we met these Ghanaians that came to us, uh, have come find us. They were not the ones mocking us. Like, I wonder they're not mocking us, but the Ghanaians that didn't even leave the group stage were mocking us. So we did a whole light hearted banter. Yes, it was all, all fun and games. So the argument and then we then telling us we still don't have light. They're yeah, right. They won with that. I mean we won football, but they won the light argument. We got to find out they did not, but they have lights. We don't have light. <laughs> that was the end. Anyway, leaving the stage and going home. I was with the Nigerian people that were trying to get me to my hotel safely since I had lost in Stephanie and I had no access to anything. The whole streets leading from where we were to Abidjan were litter with people. This was late at night. Everybody was outside just celebrating wearing the dress it was such an amazing time we got to the hotel and they had food waiting for us in our rooms they know we we're going to go home very late so we'll not be able to like meet uh, the kitchen staff so they basically set food in our room waiting for waiting for that is food they just decide we're going to like them this hotel people they're amazing like i told you this boy here they're amazing right we have food literally waiting for us so we ate and we'll end the day so we ate, the food was cold because we had set it down for, but the pastry was amazing, the food was really nice. I don't even know the name of the food I ate, but then I was like, tomorrow I'm going to ask them. So if you're here, you're watching, thank you so much for sticking with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe before you leave. And the next one, we'll start the real adventure. You're going to love it. I, I promise you're going to love it. Anyway, I guess I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Bye.